Greetings. I'm Paul, and welcome back. Let's see what we got today. Steve, let's see that much, <clears throat> in Boulder Creek, California. Hey, Boulder Creek? Hmm. Sounds like Boulder, Colorado. Anyway, the, he's in California. Steve asks, Hey, Paul, are there any advantages to using solar power in a high-end system? Maybe cleaner power? If you have any thoughts on this, I'd be interested. <clears throat> well, you know, the short answer is no. It's something to be avoided. Now, I, you know, I'm the first to want to be efficient and conserve nature. I mean, we, our planet's in trouble. We, we, you know, I know there's a whole bunch of people that don't think global warming is real, and I'm sorry that you don't. And I'm not going to start a political debate here, but um, sometimes when things happen very slowly, like this is happening, it's easy to say, no, 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 it's not happening. But anyway, let's not get into that. We'd like to have less energy used if we can. And so solar energy is, is wonderful. I'm, as, uh, I'm, I'm investigating having solar energy in my home. And it's an expensive proposition, but I think it's one that I, I would feel pretty good about doing. And I'm thinking about going with the Tesla system. They, they can come out and, and uh, put up a pretty cool system that you don't even know is there. You don't have all these things sitting on top of the roof. <clears throat> but when it comes to a high-end system, batteries and solar power typically are not great. And here's why. Solar systems produce DC, battery voltage, okay, direct current, and our systems run on AC. Now we can get into the whole thing as I did in Coal to Coal Train about <clears throat> the shame of it all, and the shame of it all is that actually our equipment, our stuff actually does run on DC, and what comes out of the wall is AC, and what comes out of a solar cell is DC. And if our homes weren't set up such that we had AC coming out of the wall that has to be converted to DC <clears throat> to make our equipment run, we'd be in good shape, right? But that's not the way it works. And there's a whole bunch of reasons, starting a long time ago with Thomas Edison. Edison wanted to have DC power because he felt it was safer and easier to use. And all or much of New York was originally wired with with battery voltage as supplied by <clears throat> Edison's West, Westinghouse and Edison were the sort of the same uh, company. And but the problem is that DC, um, well, electricity in general drops as the as, as the wires get longer and more people use it along the way. The resistance in the wire starts dropping the voltage. So uh, Edison had a problem that when you put DC voltage into a tall building, the lights at the top of the building were much dimmer than the lights at the bottom of the building, and there wasn't a whole lot he could do about that. Nikola Tesla came along and said, well, if you start with a very high voltage, then you don't really have a problem because you can <clears throat> take it down to whatever you need it and do that as many times as you want. As long as you don't exceed the high voltage, then you don't have a problem. But with DC, if you start with very high voltage, getting that down to a lower voltage, at least back then, was really problematic, really hard. You would you'd have to convert the voltage into heat. So it was a very inefficient thing. What Tesla did is he said, nah, as long as it's AC, you can make <clears throat> a magnetic coupling device that is very efficient and doesn't generate a whole lot of heat, and it's called a transformer. So Tesla's system, which is what we use today, sends high voltage AC through the big power lines and then slowly but surely it gets necked down to the 120 or the 230 volts in your home through a series of transformers. And that's why we don't use DC voltage, but <laughs> our stuff does, right? So if you were an electrical engineer or you were handy, then I would say, sure, if you could take pure DC regulate it from your solar cells, plug it directly into your high-end audio equipment at the correct voltage, then yes, that would be extraordinary and that would be really clean. But that's really hard to do and impractical for most of us. And 
you have to make sure that that DC voltage is not only clean, but it's regulated and very low impedance so that when you draw current quickly, there's no divots, there's no change at all, and that's very important. That's something batteries struggle to do unless you have a very big battery. It's one of the reasons why battery voltage is not always accepted in, in high-end circles. So what you're really talking about in a practical sense is taking the DC from your solar cells and then you have to convert it to AC to power your home. That conversion process is where we run into trouble. Most converters are not all that clean and they don't deliver peak demand current very well. So most of them are class D based, so you have pulse width modulated amplifiers that are creating the sine wave and they don't do very well in general when peak demands of low power factor products like in an amplifier um, where the current and the voltage don't follow each other then you're going to have problems and relatively high distortion so in that case for high-end audio products we're better off sticking to the wall putting it through a power plant one of our AC regenerators to, to lower the output impedance even lower and regulated even better and that's that's a better way to go so great idea I love the thought process behind it it's just not exactly what you want to do for for the highest performance of your stereo equipment thanks talk to you tomorrow bye